taking different sides of, of the debate here. Eric, I think you're, you're the more bearish of the two. What are you taking out of earnings? So we think that earnings are, you know, overall are going to be a pretty negative catalyst for the market. And as you pointed out, we saw that a little bit today from Restoration Hardware, among a couple others. So if you look at what RH said, not only uh, what you pointed out, but they also talked about a slowdown that they've seen in the last month. So you had them saying that. You had Taiwan <laughs> Semi saying they're seeing a slowdown in consumer electronics. There's been some negative uh, PC checks out there. And then you reference the, the mortgage application data. So we think a big part of our bearish thesis is a slowdown in growth, and it's going to hit earnings. And we are seeing you know, excellent examples of that uh, today. And we think that's going to be the trend that we're going to see during, during earnings season, because the consumer right now has too many headwinds against them that although they're entering this in great shape, um, the headwinds are going to be just too much to not hit discretionary spending, and that's going to reverberate throughout the economy. I thought that Gary Friedman, the CEO of RH, was refreshingly honest and candid in his remarks about some of the headwinds, the softening from the war. He called out Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, a number of times on the call. I think we can play for you a clip of what he was talking about. Then all of a sudden, you know, boom, we've got a war, you know, you, you Russia invades Ukraine, boom, you know, you know, Yellen says interest, you know, um, inflation is going from four to two, uh, and then it goes to seven and a half. And Powell says, you know, we're behind. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of yeah. Everybody thinks supply chains are getting better. I, they're not, I don't think they've gotten better at all. Mark, how is that not a warning for other consumer companies? It is. Uh, and I think um, we all know that the next few quarters and probably through the rest of the year are going to be difficult for consumer and for the supply chain. But I think it what pointed out and what you pointed out at the top of the hour was you look at Resto's performance and then you look at Lululemon's performance and the divergence of where the stocks are today. And I think it's we've gone from kind of everything is great a few years ago to everything is horrible the last three months to now you got to pick and choose and you got to pick the winners and you got to really know what your company's looking at where they're sourcing well how much is going on through asia how much is going on domestically and we're back to that stock pickers market we often talk about but the divergence in those two stocks today is glaring and i think that's what we're going to see through the rest of the year and that's okay we've had it too easy in 2020 21 in terms of the stock market we've had it too tough the last few months and now we're back to that stock pickers market which is just fine what, is that, what does that mean for tech, Mark? Because I usually think of you as someone who embraces the, the high-growth tech companies, which have had a pretty nice comeback lately, but some are wondering if that ends when the quarter ends here tomorrow. Well, you're right. I mean, we do a lot here at JMP, and we, we focus a lot on technology, and I think we've seen some of those big tech high flyers come in a lot uh, through the end of 2021 and the beginning of the year. But we've also seen some come a great deal off the bottom. We've talked about some on the show, Sarah, so you're right to point that out. But I think, again, it's going to be company specific. You talked in the last hour about differing performance in terms of the uh, uh, autonomous vehicle and electric. And you look at the difference in performance just the last three weeks or four weeks from a company like Tesla versus Rivian or the last year. And, and again, dramatic differences in terms of the kind of companies and stage of development. But as a stock picker, you wanted to be long Tesla the last six to 12 months, and you wanted to be careful of those names like Rivian. And so that's what I'm talking about. I think we've gone from everything's terrible market the last three months to really picking names. And if you pick and choose the winners, which, again, we try every single day to do that, you're going to be happy you did that. Even the rate environment we're talking about, because I think we've come through this and we've talked a lot about the yield curve. But I think we're all prepared for the rates to rise here and how we're going to play that market. And I think that's where the market found its bottom a few weeks ago. And, and again, it's selling off a little bit today, but there's no hysteria today. You look at the VIX, which is trading closer to 20 than 40. That's a real positive sign, I think, for investors to play the market and pay the, play the names that we've been talking about here at JMP.